The FBI may have altered George Floyd's autopsy report, according to a new documentary. Mr. Reagan. So you've all probably read that recently Derek Chauvin was stabbed 22 times in prison. And you've probably heard that Derek Chauvin's attacker was a former FBI informant. And obviously, a lot of people have found this very suspicious because this FBI informant, he's not even black. And logically, it just makes sense that if there was a prisoner who really hated Derek Chauvin and wanted him to die, it'd probably be a black person who was brainwashed into believing that Derek Chauvin was an evil racist. I mean, that's what the media narrative has been for years now. But it wasn't a black guy. It was a Mexican guy. And not only was it a Mexican guy, but he claims that he attacked Derek Chauvin on Black Friday which is called that because that's when the ledgers of department stores go back into the black after being in the red, losing money all year long. But this guy claims that he attacked Derek Chauvin on Black Friday because it was symbolically related to the Black Lives Matter movement and also the black hand symbol used by the Mexican mafia, which are three totally unrelated things. <laughs> this makes zero sense. This is the most garbage made up story I've ever heard. This sounds a lot like the kind of BS story that an FBI informant invents on the spot after carrying out a hit job issued by the FBI. But why would the FBI want Derek Chauvin dead? <laughs> I mean, I've seen a lot of speculation on Twitter, but honestly, I don't know. But there is a new documentary out that proposes an interesting theory about the George Floyd autopsy report. And let me say that I don't actually buy what they're saying in this documentary. I don't believe that they are right. But it's an interesting theory, and maybe I'm wrong. So I'll explain why I don't buy it at the end of the video, but I feel like I should put it out there anyway just to see what you guys think. So this documentary proposes that the official autopsy report issued by the medical examiner was altered by the FBI. It's a fascinating proposition. I'll play a bit of this documentary in one moment. First, of course, I have to sell you something. Chances are you've been here before. The chaos in the markets, oil and stocks. Just when you thought it was safe and interest rates are rising, new threats come out of nowhere. Tensions are boiling from Asia to Europe. Things are very volatile right now. You may not have considered gold before, but listen, it is not speculation, it's insurance. And right now, you need some insurance. Noble Gold Investments have been protecting investors from disaster for years with precious metals. So if you're worried, it might be time to take a fresh look at gold and silver. Gold is a proven safe haven shield for your portfolio and a volatility balance against uncertainty. Right now, Noble Gold Investments is offering a free five ounce America the Beautiful coin with its new IRAs this month. If you open your Noble Gold Investments IRA or 401k rollover, you can claim your coin today. Remember, crisis brews, portfolios waiver, gold insulates. Secure yourself against these threats. Go to noblegoldinvestments.com right now, noblegoldinvestments.com, the only gold company I trust. Okay, so 12 hours after George Floyd died, an autopsy was conducted by the Hennepin County Medical Examiner, Andrew M. Baker. Baker's findings were no physical evidence suggesting Floyd died of asphyxiation. Floyd had pre-existing health conditions, coronary artery disease, at least one artery that was approximately 75% blocked. Untreated hypertension can put you at risk for death. Get to death quicker. In a second meeting with prosecutors, Baker said that there were indications Floyd had been admitted to methamphetamine detox and that the ultimate cause of death may prove to be a multifactorial diagnosis consisting of coronary artery disease, stimulants, and the exertion of the encounter with police. In a third meeting, Baker walked prosecutors through the drugs found in Floyd's system. 19 nanograms per milliliter of meth and 11 nanograms per milliliter of fentanyl, which he characterized as a fatal level level of fentanyl under normal circumstances. This alone should exonerate Derek Chauvin, but of course we know that didn't happen. So then of course there was the notorious independent autopsy report. Uh, the autopsy shows that Mr. Floyd had no underlying medical problem that caused or contributed to his death. So there is another meeting between attorneys from the Minnesota Attorney General's office and Dr. Andrew Baker. And Baker enumerates even more facts which exonerate Derek Chauvin. No bruising on neck, no bruising on back. From the videos that I've seen, it appears 
like his knee is on the side of his neck, not where the structures are. Most cases of untreated hypertension can put you at risk for death. Certain intoxicants can exacerbate and increase the risk of death. Fentanyl at 11 nanograms per milliliter. Deaths have been certified with levels of three. If he were found dead at home alone and no other apparent causes, this could be acceptable to call an overdose. In spite of the autopsy report, charges against Derek Chauvin were filed. Today, <clears throat> I filed an amended complaint that charges, that charges former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin with murder in the second degree for the death of George Floyd. I believe the evidence available to us now supports the stronger charge of second degree murder. We've consulted with each other and we agree. When and how did you become concerned about the autopsy of George Floyd? I think we all saw video and television coverage of this, and I saw one of the body camera footages from the police officers that showed that he was complaining of shortness of breath before entering into the car. Right now. And I just had COVID, man. I don't want to go back to that. Okay. When I start breathing, when I start breathing, it's going to go off on me, man. I started realizing that, hey, something was wrong with this. A few days later, I found out that the autopsy report was available online, and so I downloaded the autopsy report and read through it. When I did that, my jaw hit the floor. In patients that have acromegaly, they tend to die from cardiovascular complications, such as heart attack or arrhythmias. Do you feel in a way they were trying to hide this information? I'm not sure if the medical examiners were trying to hide it, but it seems like the prosecutor team was trying to hide it. There's no mention of that in the original autopsy report, nor any of the other reviews, I wouldn't even call them autopsy reports, but other reviews by other medical examiners. What do you think about that? It's very strange. It raises a lot of questions. The original autopsy was done 12 hours after he was declared dead. The official report that came out a little bit later, I'm told, was changed after the family had a review by two other forensic examiners. Those two examiners never did a physical autopsy and in fact did not view any of the slides or pictures. They complained that they did not have those. We acknowledge that additional medical information, including toxicology and further investigation, are necessary for a final report. What do you think of the federal government's involvement in this case? One of the first questions I asked was, was the FBI involved? And when I found out the FBI involvement was within 12 to 24 hours, that really raised a red flag for me. The FBI conducted a meeting with Dr. Baker, which really raised another red flag. I think there's a lot of questions that remain unanswered with this. Okay, so now this guy says, I was told that the official autopsy report was changed. And he notes that the FBI visiting the medical examiner raises a red flag. Now, I don't know who told this guy that the report was changed. And I don't know if the FBI instructed the medical examiner to alter this report. You know, I don't know how reliable this guy is, but that's what he said. It's in the documentary. Maybe it's true, maybe it isn't. I, I don't know. But this guy mentions an illness that he believes that George Floyd suffered from. This is an illness that was speculated about in a research study that was conducted by another doctor. And this disease is called acromegaly. And this guy believes that acromegaly was omitted from the report because including that would have indicated that George Floyd was at higher risk of death simply because of this disease. And so it seems like what this guy's saying here is that he believes that the FBI instructed the medical examiner to admit this illness from the report. Now, I'm pretty skeptical of this because actually I don't know how often medical examiners are able to diagnose otherwise undiagnosed rare conditions of patients post-mortem. But I suspect... It, it's not very often. Obviously, in this case, you'll have 
people all over the world, amateur slews and experts in this field or that, looking at evidence and coming to conclusions. They're spending a lot of time on this stuff, much more than the medical examiner took, because they have expertise in a particular field, right? And they're going to be able to figure stuff out that a medical examiner just will not. And so the idea that this disease was obvious, and so it's likely that the FBI somehow discouraged this guy from putting it in the report, I just, I don't buy it. Also, because of the nature of this case, it actually makes sense to me that the FBI would ask the medical examiner to explain the findings to them. It makes sense that they would meet with him. So it doesn't seem to me like this report was changed. It seems like this report actually exonerates Derek Chauvin. You know, the media, of course, just kind of ignored this autopsy report, and they focused on the so-called independent examiner's report. And by independent, I think they, what they really meant is totally biased. But yeah, from the media, we were all told, yes, definitely the reason George Floyd died was because of Derek Chauvin's knee on his neck, right? The knee on the neck technique. And maybe you believe this theory about the FBI, maybe not. Like I said, I'm skeptical, but the documentary seems like a pretty good documentary anyway, so I suggest checking it out. But what I have always found extremely unjust about this case, the thing that nobody ever talks about, is that Derek Chauvin was instructed by the Minneapolis police to use that knee on the neck restraint technique. He was taught to do this. He was instructed to do this. This was a technique that was officially authorized to be used to detain hostile suspects being arrested by this guy's employer, the Minneapolis Police Department. Now, this is from, I believe, the Minneapolis Police Department manual. It's got instructions for officers to do drills, to practice these techniques. So here's the neck restraint portion. So I don't know, you know, the FBI has become so sketchy that I can totally believe that they had something to do with the stabbing of Derek Chauvin. And even though I'm skeptical that they altered the autopsy report, you know, I wouldn't put it past them. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. That's it for me. And remember, it's not that all liberal friends are ignorant. It's just they know so much that is not so. Good night. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth. And this idea that government is beholden to the people, that it has no other source of power except the sovereign people, is still the newest and the most unique idea in all the long history of man's relation to man.